Hey guys, today I'm continuing the series about heating greenhouses and heating with emergency heat and also possibly using this as a stove. But today's secret ingredient is using eggshells to create heat. I'm going to show you the exact steps to take each step along the way where you can turn an eggshell into a fuel source for a heater or a stove. Now, in the case of my eggshells, I usually wash them and I like to put them in the oven for about two hours and that's because I use them as a fertilization source for calcium for my garden. I can, I'll link that video up above but in this case these are just some extra eggshells I had for that process but I'm going to start by taking the eggshells and breaking them down into smaller pieces before I put them into the blender. Now I've crushed my eggshells down to make it a little bit easier for my blender and then I'm going to add them to this blender and you could I suppose use a coffee grinder, food processor, but you just want to take these from this state down to a powdered state where they are very very fine powder just like a baby powder or a talcum powder. All right, and you may have to do this for several minutes depending on the strength of your blender. This blender is quite strong and it will turn these into a very fine powder very quickly. I got to turn this on, put it on maximum blending. I want it to be, like I said before, a very, very fine powder. Now it's a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to flip it around so you can see what a fine powder that it's become. And so I'll be able to use this, as I said, as part of a nutritional supplement for my tomatoes and other vegetables. But in this case, we're doing something completely different with it. But anyways, that shows you what a fine powder's come. I may run it through a second time just to make sure it's as fine as possible, but that's what it looks like once you've ran it through the blender. Now I'm gonna show you what a fine powder we've got. And this is some that I've made previous, but it is exactly like today's blend. It is just a super fine powder. We're going to take about two ounces of the eggshell powder and we're going to add that to common 5% household white vinegar. Now our mixture is about two ounces of our eggshell powder to about eight ounces of 5% vinegar, household vinegar. So there we are at 8% and you can upsize that to a larger quantity, but I'm just making a smaller batch just for the video. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our eggshell powder to our 5% vinegar and you're going to see a carbon dioxide reaction and this is to create the final product we're after. And so what you're going to see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit there so you can see the reaction. There's going to be a carbon dioxide reaction when you mix the two together. And you'll probably see a lot of foaming so that's why it's a good idea to use a quite larger container because it will foam up quite a bit. I want to give you a close-up shot of the reaction carbon dioxide forming. Let's see if I can get that in focus there. And so that shows you the mixture and it's just creating the next step in our formula, which is going to be calcium acetate. But that's a little bit of a closer shot of what's happening. You can also see there's a lot of foaming. So if you do use a smaller container, it's probably going to get quite messy. So just make sure you use a large cup when you mix these two together so it doesn't foam over onto your countertop. Now I'm going to take a bamboo skewer and just make sure that it's well mixed. And just mix that for about two minutes to make sure that we can go on to the next step of filtering it because we do have some larger particles in there. So we just want to make sure that you don't skip this next step of filtering so you can come up with the calcium acetate. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to filter our egg and vinegar mixture. I'm going to take a jar, put this funnel in it, and I'm also going to top that or put it on the inside. I'm going to place a paper coffee filter and slowly run that through there. It's going to take a few minutes for it to run through, but that will be what we need for our final product. I'm just going to give that a few minutes to completely filter and this will be our calcium acetate once it filters through our coffee filter. Now we've finished our filtration process and what we're left with now 
in the filter is basically just our impurities there. And so we don't have to do anything with that except for throw it away. But what we have in the bottom of the jar now is calcium acetate. And we're going to need to go on to the next step to get that ready to turn into our fuel source. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little portable gas stove. And I really love these stoves. It really looks nice. Some of the ones that I've seen are not made very nice, but this is all metal and it's lasted me quite a long time. I actually had to order it directly from South Korea. If you'd like one, they're now sold on Amazon, so I'll link it down below. But what we're going to do is we're just going to add our fuel and then move on to the next step. Now, the next step we're going to do is we're going to reduce our liquid down by about 50%. And so we're going to boil that and reduce it, like I said, to half its volume that it currently is. And we're just going to boil off some of the water that's in there. Okay, we've just about got it boiled to about 50% of its original volume. And now we're ready to move on to the next step. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add about seven and a half to eight ounces of isopryl alcohol and this is 99% so it's very pure. You can use methanol or ethanol but this is just what I happen to have on hand today and so it will work just fine depending on purity. The more purity is the more clean it's going to burn so I would recommend try to get the highest percentage alcohol you can. Again this is 99% pure so you're going to have less additives and things that might cause it not to burn quite as pure as you'd like it to. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our very hot calcium acetate. We're going to add it to our alcohol and just slowly pour that in there. And that is going to become our fuel source. In a matter of minutes, we'll just start stirring that. And you can see it's already starting to react together and kind of become a slushy substance. But I'll zoom you in a little bit closer so you can see it. But this is our gel alcohol fuel that we've created from eggs, rubbing alcohol, vinegar. So we're just going to mix that until it forms a little bit more solid. And that will be our fuel. And we'll just give it a little bit more time to solidify. Sometimes it takes about five minutes for the reaction to completely finish. Now after giving it about five minutes for the reaction to take place, we're left with our gel that we're going to use for our gel alcohol stove, but it just takes a little bit of practice and it may take you two or three times to get the formula just right. You just want to make sure that you mix it well, don't put too much alcohol, and you can try different types of alcohol if you'd like. Now generally you're going to get about three hours burn time from about 13 ounces of this and you want to kind of spread it out across a pan. You don't want it in a deep container because then the top might burn, but then you won't have complete burn. So spreading it out in something like a pan like this may work better for you in your heater stove. Okay, so I've allowed a little bit more time to pass and absorb more of the alcohol. We're going to transfer this into a tuna can and turn it into a small heater. I've only made a small batch, but a larger batch is obviously is going to burn longer. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what it's going to look like once it's absorbed most of your alcohol. It's just like an ice. looks like ice, and you'll see just a little bit of alcohol left, but most of the alcohol has been absorbed into calcium acetate. Okay, so I want to give you a close-up of it actually burning and how clean it actually does burn. And I need to put something under it that will prevent... Yeah, I'll just take another tuna can, turn that upside down, so that way we don't get our table too hot. I'm going to set that on fire and let you see that it burns quite well. Only thing in there is our gel, and this will burn for quite a while, even though it's only a small amount. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a small stove and we'll show you how, or it's actually a small heater, and show you exactly how to do that. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer all of our gel alcohol using a plant tag. And I'm going to just put that into our tuna can. And like I say, this is really just a small version of what you can make, which would, a larger one would burn quite a bit longer. And I'm just going to make sure I get all of our gel fuel into our tuna can move that there. And I'm going to show you how to assemble our heater or slash stove. Now what I've done is I've taken some stainless steel mesh and that's going to act as our 
It's going to get really hot and it's going to expel heat all around it. I've taken our fuel source, put it in the bottom can. We're just going to slide our stainless steel mesh into that can. On the top, I have another empty tuna can. We're going to light that and I'm going to have to raise it up and put it in another container to make sure we don't damage our table. Okay, now what I've done here is I put a cast iron pot at the bottom. I filled it with sand. I put our little mini heater inside, put some stainless steel around the outside of it. I've put an aluminum, or excuse me, a metal. I think this is stainless, but it may have some residue on it. So you may want to do your first burn outside. So if there's any residues, it'll be burned off. But we have this all put together. This is how it's going to reflect heat back out into the room. This will absorb heat. The sand will absorb heat. The cast iron pan will absorb heat. So once your heater goes out, you'll still be expelling just a small amount of heat into your greenhouse or hoop house. All right, I'm going to light our gel fuel. You can see it's burning really quickly. And that stainless steel mesh will continually get hotter and it will just expel a lot of heat into the room. You can already feel a lot of heat coming off of it, especially at the top. But that's going to burn for a while. But like I said, you can upsize this to a much larger heater using larger cans. I'm just using a couple of small tuna cans. So you can see even after 10 minutes of burning, it's still putting out quite a bit of heat. I would recommend double or tripling the size of your can so it will last quite a bit longer. But if you're just wanting to do an ex experiment and see how well it works, I would recommend doing it in a little bit smaller cans to see how well it works for you. The thing is remember that these cans sometimes are coated with different types of materials to keep them from rusting. So do the first burn outdoors because it may put out a little bit of smell, smoke, or some residue from that waxy like product they put on the can. So just remember to do that beforehand. So guys, I really appreciate you watching. And if you got something out of the video, I hope you'll like and subscribe. I've measured temperatures ranging from four to 500 degrees up to almost 800 degrees. I've changed around our lid to a stainless steel pet bowl lid, and I think that works a little bit better. It seems to radiate heat a little bit better. But anyways, hope you guys have a great day.